Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. This is part two of the Grimoire series. Now, as I've talked about, a Grimoire basically is just a how-to book. It has nothing to do with pronunciation other than the fact that, well, you got to read the word, I guess you have to pronunciate it, but it has absolutely nothing to do with that. Again, that's a mistranslation of the backwards French. But it's a misinterpreted because a French person wouldn't tell you that either. Not unless you were talking about speaking a language and you wanted to use that terminology. But again, people that speak the language would not interpret it that way. So uh, to move ahead with grimoires, as I said, the grimoires vary. Uh, we have a whole bunch of grimoires, uh, uh, which uh, we uh, have been offering for many, many years. Uh, and of course, these are combined talismanic texts, which are empowered, which initiate you as you read them. Now, these were built into grimoires in the past, and we have kind of returned to this tradition using our own way of empowering you. Now, words on a page are absolutely nothing. They don't do anything for you, and most of these books had secret messages hid in them. The grimoires, uh, they were, there was a, uh, uh, grimoires were written for uh, two people, for the initiates who could understand it, and for the general public as well. There was a lot of secret stuff in all the grimoires. And of course, uh, we have went through a lot of this stuff and taken the empowerment uh, that was in the past and put it in our new grimoires. So they're very fascinating, rare, and unusual books that only, of course, this organization does. Everybody else has words on a page which are basically worthless. Now, a lot of these books, again, are pulp fiction, saying that it can make you invisible, that uh, you'll open up doors with the spells. Now, this was all done to sell to the masses while the initiates uh, got the real information out of that. Uh, but all of this stuff is of dubious empowerment, and I've never seen anybody able to actually do those kind of empowerments, finding treasure, finding other things. Well, a lot of this came through the spirits connected to things again. So you got to remember that the one difference between the technology of ancient magic is the fact that it is using, instead of energetic informational fields, as we use in scalar radionics, it's using... Uh, actual spirits. And we know that spirits are 100% real and effective. And this is something that I am moving back into because of the fact that, um, you know, I started there and used them successfully for many, many years. And then you wander off into this kind of sterile number reality uh, that you get into. But everything, no matter what you're doing, no matter what process is involved, is connected to spirits, plain and simple. So uh, they're around everything, just as spirits are around you. Your relatives that are gone, uh, your past energies. Well, we all believe in this, and every single belief system in this world uh, has always been based on uh, basically ancestor worship. And a lot of people don't understand this. Uh, so the whole idea is people were always tapping into those who had passed over, and these are the levels of spirits that are connected to the world here that are connected in many ways. They may be ghosts that uh, aren't want to stay here. They may be your relatives who have passed. They may be ancestors of yours. These are all the people that are out there and that you can tap into. Now, the Chinese believe in this as well. They make little houses. They, they buy money that they burn. They'll bring cars. Uh, of course, we have... In Japan, we have the um, the entire ancestor worship there as well. And of course, they got that from China because there's nothing that the Japanese do that didn't come uh, from China. Uh, now, this is so true uh, going into, of course, uh, through the Caribbean and other places uh, where there are uh, calling on spirits and using uh, spirits from um, graveyards and everything else. That's how these things are done. Now, a lot of people think that this was not a European tradition. Well, I want to correct you there, because almost every single European uh, spiritual tradition, from the Druids to everyone else, were calling on their ancestors to help them. 
This turned into, as many of the god forms that we know from around the world, uh, this came from a tribal leader, someone who was great, who then passed on, um, who then became into a form of being a god. This is most like it would happen through all of the Druidic, Druidic, uh, the Celtic, the Nordic, etc. Most likely these were people at one time or another that were brought up to the uh, level of god forms. Uh, so, um, so these are spirits that are hanging around. Uh, there's a whole class of spirits, and this uh, is not the appropriate place to go through all these. We talk about angels and other things. But these are things, when we talk about those types of spirits that are non-Earth connected, meaning they didn't come from Earth. They seem to come from uh, the atmosphere, space, angels, uh, these kind of things. So there are levels of this stuff. Now, most people that are successful are using spirits that are connected to their family, whether they're relatives, uh, whether they are going to a graveyard and uh, then finding a grave of a soldier when you need protection and using that spirit for that because that person was doing that before he died. So I hope everybody understands that. So these are the things that go on. Of course, this is what a lot of... Um, now, a lot of grimoires are also, also um, uh, connected to using sigils and other things. Now, there's a whole bunch... I just grabbed a few for this. I'm going to go more into this in the in the future. Uh, but these are types of uh, sigils that draw in particular energies. Does that sound like radionics to you? It sounds like radionics to me. Because what they do is they're using a number sigil. And here's one right here. But I use a combination where you have a particular number rented, representing an energy. This represents tachyon. This is the number that represents it. But it's also been empowered by sigils that are underneath here to draw those kind of energies there. And it's also on the back here, there is a sound wave that will empower this number. So there's a multi-aspect here. So we're doing that with the same thing here. Now, when we look at this, this has these are Jewish characters that spell out a particular use. The same thing here. I believe these are names of gods or spirits. I'm not sure what these are exactly. You also have the shape of the actual figure here, the two interlocking pyramids uh, that are there. And of course, there's other symbols laid on top of it. So a whole bunch of things are going on here. You also have a color. And as is traditional with almost all sigils, is you're using a round circle to hold the energy in. So those are the type of things that people should look at. And we can look at another here. Uh, these are nice because they're colored. Um, but again, you've got the uh, Jewish symbols, you've got the uh, Jewish star, here's the Jewish star, which is that, uh, so you've got a whole bunch of stuff, you've got other symbols within the symbols, other writings, you've got the colors, etc. And here's a classical, more old type, and again, you're getting the different symbols here. Here's a whole writing to draw that energy in. You've got these symbols, the star, the pyramid, all of these things. Now, this is an ancient symbol as well for a particular thing. As I said, a modern sigil would be something like this. Now, these are for general energies. These are not for spirits, so they don't really have spirit sigils. Now, spirit sigils would be something that actually has... Uh, uh, is an energy that attracts that specific spirit. Now, one of the things that goes on, and here's a classic uh, ritual magic, and I'm coming up with an entire system of how you can do tabletop rituals, which is far, far overdue. Instead of uh, drawing a circle like this, uh, that classically tells you in gr grimoires has to be nine feet, etc. You have to draw this. It's, it's, it's a very difficult, arduous process that is not important. But this circle is meant to protect you from spirits that are actually... Um, I'm not sure if they're demonic, but you just don't necessarily want to invoke these kind of spirits. There's invoking and evoking. Evoking is when you call upon a spirit, tell it what to do, and send it out to do the job. Invoking is when you bring the spirit energy into you physically and let them work through you, which is done with positive, helpful healing spirits, and it's perfectly safe. You don't want to do that with a spirit that is untrustworthy or even maybe destructive in nature. You want to send them out. 
Now, what you do is you kind of place your photograph in a um, something like this. And then you would then put the sigil of the spirit on this. Now, this is a triangle, and triangles hold spirits. So you'd put the name of or the sigil of the spirit in here, and you would call the spirit into the triangle. That means they cannot come out of this triangle and come after you. You're protected here with your photograph. Uh, now, your photograph represents yourself, and there are advanced ways of doing this, but you're protected by doing this by bringing in something that may be, quote, gray. Maybe it's a lust or money spirit. You know, they're not, ne they're not necessarily bad. They're also not necessarily good. You want to be careful. Spirits uh, want something from you. Now, here's another classic uh, protective circle. This has all the angels on it. I don't know if you can see it. These are our new um, um, actual beautiful uh, plates that we have here that are printed on. So uh, these are clay plates uh, that you can use, create sacred space, etc. But this has all the different archangels on it. It has um, different writings and astrological signs. It has protective energies in the center. This is another way of doing it. So these are tile plates. Here's a traditional uh, runic circle where you would then uh, place yourself in when you're calling on different energies as well. Another beautiful thing. And these things like these three plates here, these create sacred energy places. So one of the problems is when you're using um, particularly uh, scalar tools and machines is that you want to lay them on something like this. We also have big altar cloths, which have always been used. Um, to create a sacred space so that you don't have conflicting energies around you. And these are really beautiful and uh, do watch for those coming up in our uh, online catalog. So you would then place yourself here, you place the spirit here, and then when you've done that process, you tell the spirit that is in here what you desire and you send them off to do it. This is just a ritual magic understanding. Now, the one thing with grimoires that people tend to confuse is that generally grimoires are intermediate to advanced books, unless it states differently. Uh, they're difficult to use unless you understand magic. If you don't understand magic and what basic ritual magic is, and we have an entire book on this, which uh, shows you how to do very simple ritual magic. And this is something really that if you're going to use grimoires, you should know how to do, how to form circles, how to uh, call on different energies, how to banish, etc. You know, that's getting rid of a problematic spirit, etc. So, you know, grimoires generally require a lot of work like that. Now, when you're doing stuff uh, like uh, our traditional sorcery course, which is based in formulas and candles and oils, uh, this is why people uh, like to use those systems because they're so simplistic and you don't need much setup. You just kind of use the formula, which is made for a specific purpose. And now we have everything on empowered discs. And then you just kind of light candles. And we have a new way of doing all that using only tea light candles instead of the nightmare of using tapers or votives. Uh, these are all a big problem to use. Uh, and, of course, we define that in that course. Again, this is not the place uh, for that. Uh, but, I mean, that's your... Uh, so, if you have a particular sigil that's in a grimoire... Now, one way that what you can do is that, you know, you can't copy the um, uh, the books of these grimoires in terms of um, copying them, because you're going to lose the empowerment of them. But you're more than happy to, and it will work, to copy a particular spirit sigil and then put it here. And again, this can be an archangel or other things. Uh, now, if you're just going to... Um, uh, it can be positive spirits. It can be spirits that are there for love, money, lust, etc., protection. Uh, so you've got to find the spirit you want to work with. You've got to find its name, etc. And that's, of course, uh, what the grimoires are all about. And a lot of the grimoires will have the actual sigils in them. So we recommend you just scan that sigil, and you're more than happy to scan it, print it out, and use it. Uh, don't cut up your book. Uh, this is a terrible thing to do. Secondly, it's not about copying the entire book. This will disempower it. 
but you're but when you're getting into sigils and stuff, there's no reason to redraw it. All you've got to do is copy it using the process of scanning. Now, there's also a misunderstanding here. A lot of people wanted to clean up uh, the actual sigils you find in most grimoires. The circles aren't perfect. The writing isn't perfect. Well, these were written down. These are the uh, all of our books. All of my books are exact replicas of the original documents that were written hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And as such, the energy from them is still in there by the person who actually put that on paper, who wanted that energy transferred. So you've got to use original sigils. If you're getting books that clean things up and make fancy little cute circles, you are just not going to get any results. They're bastardized energies and they will have a minor amount of energy in them compared to what the actual original writer. Now, most of the time our books come with uh, the original documents. Some do, some don't. Depends on uh, what is going on there. Other ones, of course, um, have uh, the reality of their energy in them. And of course, the entire book is a talismanic empowerment. So it's important to do that. And of course, these books you use as talismans. You put them in places. People put photographs in them. Uh, people stack them on their altars. All the things you can do. But you're welcome to go in there and copy the original sigil image, whatever it may be, of a particular spirit. And you can just scan this, put it in a, a scanner, etc. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, most people you can scan fairly easily without ripping anything out of your book or so forth. But you don't want to take the books apart. You don't want to cut anything out. You don't want to do any of that because that is going to destroy the energetic factor. Now, these books are sealed as talismanic tools that they are. The first and last pages have energies in them. There's energy throughout them. When you disturb this by either copying them entirely or taking out bits and pieces, you are destroying that factor of the book. It now becomes just words on a page like you get from everybody else. So understand that because that's critical that you don't do that. So um, so understanding grimoires is that. As I said, it's a term that's used today to mean any how-to book. And there are very, quote, modern grimoires because it's just a term. There's nothing in a grimoire that denotes that it is ancient except a word that is not used often. So... Um, Anything can be a grimoire. Anything can be a how-to book that instructs you on how to do something. You could call a book on how to remove a toilet, the toilet grimoire. It's as simple as that. There's nothing mystical about it. There's nothing special about it. There's nothing grammarly about it. It is plain and simple a how-to book. And uh, so you could call that, but generally grimoire is a term uh, saved for, uh, and of course coming from the French, uh, who as I've already mentioned in uh, the first uh, video on this, were the people that translated most of this and have the best books or the best uh, translations are the French grimoires taken usually from Latin and uh, Greek and other things, because everything was written in Greek initially. Most of that went to Latin, and after Latin, most of that went into French. Because you've got to remember that the French, or the Franks, ran most of uh, uh, the Europe uh, for hundreds of years under Napoleon and other rules. So, um, so that's the progression of things. One of the problems with any kind of Latin books is they can be highly changed by the environment that they were sitting in, meaning the Vatican and Christianity, uh, who decided to change and modify these books as so many of them are. And of course, when things are so old, people are always adding a little of this, taking out a little of that. So it's a real problem, uh, with, uh, when you get into the study of things. Um, so the whole idea is to understand the text that you're using. So it's a general word meaning how to book, plain and simple. But it does sound kind of fancy and cool if it's magically based. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is that um, uh, everyone needs to understand, they needs to understand what a grimoire is. And don't get into the, uh, as I've mentioned already, which I, I personally find uh, really disturbing of how ignorant Dumadamia is, that they would foist through that on you. And of course, these idiot writers who are teachers and college professors who translated this stuff for personal profit or kind of to goof off because they got money for it, um, is insulting to everyone. It just shows you how they, they not only have they missed the boat, 
the boat has sailed two months before that, and they're showing up at the, to board the ship that left two months ago. That's how far out of touch they are. So getting anything that is coming from a particular teacher for Demodamia is pretty much worthless because these people don't have the background. Whether they dabble in some sort of occultism, etc., is not good enough. They don't get it. So it's very important, and it's very important that you use the proper translations, which are the only proper translations out there are the translations that this organization offers, plain and simple. So stop being fooled by the bogus, rotten people out there that translate things poorly, that have no idea what they're doing, and of course, fear everything I do, because the best is always feared. So we need to understand that reality that is out there. So as I said, that's what it, I mean, we have lots of grimoires. Uh, we have samurai grimoires that come from that particular tradition, and they're all quite different uh, from the original things that you may have seen, because we've added uh, information that has been lost, and we've added stuff to empower them. So even if you have a semi-okay uh, translation, they don't have the empowerments we put in there, the systems we put in there, etc. There's just night and day, and if you want just a bunch of dry garbage that doesn't work, buy somebody else's grimoires. So, we have lots of them. We have uh, basic Mexican systems, samurai systems, Babylonian systems. We have translated and put these into very usable, powerful forms uh, for you to access easily. And do watch for our coming of our new ritual magic tabletop way of doing things. And we're going to have a whole series of these uh, sometime, if I live to be 160. Uh, we'll be able to get all these tools out that have been in the works for many, many years. Uh, but you do have to be careful. Remember, we live in a world of lies, deceptions, mediocre everything, misinformation, plain and simple, corrupt, evil people. And they're going to produce what? Pure, wonderful things that help you? Or are they going to be destructive, garbage, nonsense? Well, it's pretty easy to figure that one out. So be careful no matter what tools you use. The entire radionic industry is ran by criminal Satanists. You don't know that? Wake up, baby. If you think that anything of power is not highly corrupted and controlled by the bad guys, you are living in Disneyland. And the fireworks are coming soon, little ones. Go, go. Because that's about the level you're on. The bottom line is anything that's powerful is corrupted and made into sewage. So you have to understand that. So if you are fortunate to be watching this and you found your way to a powerful source of pure information written from the only person out there who is not corrupt and was found away, well, you are very fortunate indeed. Follow the path, follow the training, and you will find great rewards. Nothing is easy. The magic lamp philosophy is a lie. There is no such thing. The Latin's lamp and everything else are just made up stories by the French. They're not even based into ancient uh, or what we would call mythology of the Middle East. It's not. Those were added by the French when they found out that the other stuff was selling. They decided to put in all these funny little stories. Uh, so remember, that's not how life is. And if life worked like that, then there really wouldn't be much thing to, worth living. Everybody would be popping things up in front of them. No, nothing would work. It doesn't work like that. There is a bigger picture to keep uh, chaos from uh, enveloping everything. We have enough chaos, enough lies and deceptions, and that's the way it is. So uh, the whole idea is using these powers in your life can be very profound. If you learn the art of manifesting, which is using the ancient tech, which is magic and grimoires, to the modern tech, which is a scalar uh, energetic informational field, and they all kind of combine. So our new stuff will have uh, different, quote, rates on them. And the rates will be also the spiritual rates. And here again, there's a spiritual aspect to everything. And everybody really was connected to their spirits. And a lot of people have that even today. They feel like they're helped from their family in terms of those who passed, their grandparents and great grandparents. This is very, very common, as I've mentioned already, throughout the entire world, by the way. 
you know, the gods that have uh, have replaced the real energies out there were made up. They're made up by a group of people to get you to conform to their thinking, and you're going to have to do what they tell you and give them money. When basically the real help comes from spirits that uh, most likely are connected to you in one way or another, or are energetic informational fields that are still connected to some sort of, quote, God form, angel, etc., and of course, as I said, there are many levels of this. It's a very complicated subject. And hopefully someday, again, on my list that is very, very long of making booklets to explain all these interesting little areas so you can empower yourself. And in the end, life is all about what? Manifesting. you got to manifest in life. you got to create things. You have to create wisdom. You have to create well-being. You have to create high consciousness. And of course, with all that stuff is the physical aspects of creating money uh, and so forth. So this is all part of the bigger picture that we live in and that we have created as a skunk race uh, that the humans are. We are not living in the Matrix, people. We are living in a cold, cruel world and you better wake up. That fantasy was not meant to be taken personally, or I should say interpreted so crudely uh, that somebody is actually make you and you're operating a computer. It's amazing how one of you, how so much of your dumb Damien wants to come out and said we're living in a computer program. Um, I'm afraid life is serious as a heart attack, baby. And that's an easy excuse for all those people that don't want to do nothing, which is pretty much everybody. So wise up, use the powers out there. These are like everything else in life. These are neutral powers. It depends upon the person, whether they use it for good or bad. Using a quote, demonic spirit is not a ne necessarily an evil thing to do. Uh, demons you could uh, label as destructive or low-level energies. You certainly wouldn't go to an angel and tell him, yeah, I want to get me a piece of tail on Friday. So you, you don't do that to an angel. So why would you do that? They're going to look at you as a low-level. So you go down to the lust spirit. And again, uh, spirits, and no matter what these ancient grimoires state, and some of them, of course, living in agricultural societies, like we don't murder a lot of animals. We used to murder animals just to put uh, furs on our bodies. These are uh, ceremonies, and the grimoires in some areas may talk about uh, negative practices. You're supposed to be as smart to understand we don't change what's in the book. That's for the boozers. That's for the idiots, the jerks. We give you the pure information so it's not distorted. You have to modify this stuff to your own personal level. So uh, doing any kind of blood sacrifices ties you to a particular spirit and is a very, very unrecommended. You don't do that kind of stuff. You don't need to do that. Traditionally, all sorts of gifts. And if you're dealing with spirits, just like if someone helped you or you helped someone, you know, it's kind of nice if they give you a drink or lunch, isn't it? So if a spirit helps you, you want to make sure you give them things like alcohol, candy, and depending on where they're from, dates, figs, whiskey, cigars. These are things that are prized by the spirit world for being part and connected to the physical world that you give them. Any kind of blood sacrifices is going down a very negative path. And you're going to tie yourself and you're not going to get rid of the spirit if you do that. So keep that in mind. So And so if these uh, societies that talk about, uh, and you know, I always find it interesting that people talk about things like the Ark of the Covenant. You know, the Ark of the Covenant was powered by thousands of sacrificed animals that were thrown into the fire to do it. That's the great thing. And of course, what few people understand how primitive Judaism is, it's a very pagan religion that used animal sacrifice and still does to this day. So uh, that's one of the problems with uh, the Ju Judaism in general, particularly as you get into conservative and all these other things that are following the ancient traditions. So this is ridiculous. So, uh, so all of those mentioning, if you're so stupid to take them literally, well, I pity the food as it thinks like that. So the whole idea is that's part of uh, the reality of it. And of course, all of the uh, literalists out there, including all the boob uh, uh, religious people um, who follow their idiot book, uh, will uh, uh, taking that literally is ridiculous. 
So the whole idea is those are all part of it, but we don't change things to make them more nicey for modern society. You know, all these sacrificing of animals and all the things that they talk about are all something uh, that is very common, and we do it today all the time as we murder billions of animals every day, or at least every year. So we got to keep that in mind. So those are the one of the things that people tend to object to. The other things is the fact that you're using spirits that are kind of aggressive. Uh, they do things uh, to uh, take care of your enemies. They do things to bring you a lust and other things. You know, all the things that we need in life? Well, certainly we don't see any kind of justice coming from uh, the other levels. We don't see that from these other spirits who want to talk nicey nights. You know, destructive energy can be used for good or bad and like everything else out there. Now, you can use something for a positive purpose or you can use it for a negative purpose. So when we get into that, you have to understand that as well. And these are the higher practices that we talk about in different things. Uh, we talk about particularly in the, um, the guild handbook who covers all this stuff uh, to a large degree of what a guild is, all the ancient type stuff. Uh, the bottom line is there's really not a, um, well, there is an inner order that we are not really following a traditional guild like we used in the past, but that book is loaded with empowered information, over a hundred sigils to change your consciousness. Um, so this is all part of the process that everybody has to know. I think we all know what is negative and what are bad things to do. And if you have to be held your hand to tell you that, well, then you're a pretty foul person that doesn't deserve much respect to begin with. Um, so we all understand what is right and wrong and what should be done. And certainly um, these uh, realities out there are uh, something that we need to uh, fully understand and balance with what is understood by everybody, no matter where you come from, on any uh, four corners of this particular uh, uh, place called Earth, we understand what is right and wrong and don't make any excuses to any difference. So, um, and the fact is, as I said, of using uh, what are considered powerful, darker side energies, which basically is what uh, humankind works on all the time, is nothing wrong with it if you are doing a purpose that benefits yourself without really hurting others. And generally, that is something that is easily done. But of course, we're in a doggy eat dog world and business is business. So you have to figure out and find out what is appropriate for your particular situation. Um, so those are, but uh, as I said, when the issue of um, this comes up of what do you give in terms of sacrifices, you give food and drink and smoke. That's what the spirits are. Anything past that is something that is generally used by negative evil practitioners. Black magic is using um, basically what are strong, destructive forms. Evil magic is the worship and destruction of society and mankind for egotistical benefits. And part of those practices is to do very negative things. That's evil magic. That's not black magic. And we need to understand that. Uh, so the whole idea is using something forceful uh, to get what is proper for yourself and others is certainly appropriate, and you have to figure out what is appropriate for what time and place. So hopefully that has, in a kind of a nutshell, has uh, given everybody a insight into this. So I hope you enjoyed this. We'll be having uh, much more talks about grimoires and other things in the near future. Until next time.